Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Wayne State Graduate School's Professional Development Series. Uh, we have two events left this semester, both on the topic of financial literacy and personal finance. Um, today, we are introducing a new speaker for the first time. Uh, please welcome uh, Julie Hollinshead from the Mike Hewlett School of Business. She teaches personal finance. Um, she is an adjunct professor, uh, similar to myself, and uh, she's going to lead the first of two sessions on, uh, on actual financial literacy topics today. Uh, today's topic is all about credit, credit scores, um, and, and kind of busting some of the myths. So there will be a couple of polls uh, also, so please be sure to keep your Zoom screen uh, available so that you can answer our couple of poll questions today. And uh, next week, we'll have our final PDS event of the semester. That is Securing Your Financial Future. Julie will be back uh, to speak on that topic as well. As always, be sure to put your questions in the chat. Um, you can also use the raise hand option uh, if you'd like to come off of mute and ask your question as well. Um, we'll try to monitor both of those. If you have questions as we go along, we try for more engaging, interactive sessions here. And um, the last couple of weeks have really been engaging uh, with our topics of conflict management. And hopefully this will be more of the same today. So uh, Julie, if you'd like to go ahead and take it away, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nick. Um, hello, everyone. It's great to meet you. Um, I'm thrilled to be here to talk with you about a subject that I teach in my personal finance class, um, specifically your credit score, um, managing credit, like why is this so important? And I, I love talking about this and working with students on it because there's a lot of misinformation um, uh, available on social media. And we wanna break that down today and make sure that everybody is very clear on how to get your credit score, what it is and how it impacts your, your life. Your and life, your life, your life, your life, your life. Um, Nick, I'd like to start with the first poll, um, which is how many people think that carrying a small balance on your credit card helps your credit score. This is a totally anonymous poll. Okay, so it looks like um, everybody's, just about everybody's participated. Um, is there anybody else who wants to participate before we close this poll? Okay, it looks like um, two thirds um, of our participants believe that it, carrying a small balance does help your credit score. Um, okay, we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Um, thank you so much, but let's hold on to this thought. Um, oh, let's share the results. So there we go. Okay, so there are, I, I, I think we can uh, close this poll now, um, Nick. So there are many stories of students who graduate um, with their graduate degrees and are so happy um, to be done with their studies and getting on with their job that they you know, work so hard to get all the qualifications for. Um, but at the same time, Nick, I'm still seeing the share results. Um, Nick, is there any way to... Um, it's just a personal, like, and you can just minimize it. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, for some reason, it's not working. It's not letting me minimize. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Um, sorry about that. Um, so at the same time, some students look back and they have some regret. They have some regret because they carried multiple credit cards while they were going through school 
And they use those credit cards to pay for things like eating out and entertainment, um, possibly you know, spring break vacations. And what they discover when they look at the size of their balances and put together a plan to pay them off is that often the uh, payments that they need to make monthly to pay off their credit card debt equals the amount of a car payment. So the ability to buy goods and services with a credit card is for sure convenient. I use my credit card all the time. But the thing with credit cards is they can be seductive and we have to watch out and make sure that um, we have the bumper guards in place so that you know, we don't get ourselves into a debt that level that you know, is difficult for us to pay off. Today, we're gonna to talk about using credit responsibly and the far reaching impacts of credit scores. And as Nick mentioned, if you have any questions as we're going through uh, this talk today, please don't hold back on answering your questions. I wanna make sure that everybody is in full command of what um, constitutes a strong credit history, a strong credit score, and how you can build a strong credit history. So as we think about uh, credit cards um, and debt overall, the thing about credit cards is that the interest rates range from about 15% to close to 30%. And those interest rates that we would pay to credit card companies um, if we carry balances from month to month are much higher uh, than rates that we could get on our savings account, you know, which you know, still those rates are at rock bottom levels. Um, and they're even higher than what we would typically earn if we invested that money in the stock market. If you look back at the returns on the stock market, uh, going back to the 1920s, the average annual return that you would get on your account ranges between eight and 10%. So I lay all this out um, because the point is, is that credit card debt, you know, when you're carrying balances month to month is very harmful to your financial stability because you're paying a much higher rate on that debt to credit card companies than what you could earn for yourself. And wouldn't you rather just keep that money for yourself? So what does that look like? So the average um, debt that millennials are carrying is about $4,900. And the average interest rate is 18%. And, and that interest compounds every day of every month of the year. So if you're carrying that $4,900 balance for a year, after 12 months, the interest that's accumulated is gonna be close to $900. It's actually $888 to be, $882 to be uh, precise. And so what happens is that $4,900 that you're carrying month to month for 12 months, at the end of 12 months, um, you will have racked up an additional $882 in interest, meaning that now as you go into the next year, you're going to owe $5,782. And if you don't pay off that um, debt in that second year and you keep allowing that interest to compound every day of that following 12 months, then you will have racked up an additional um, roughly um, $1,000 in interest. So that original debt of $4,900 has now grown to um, over $6,800. So can you see how fast that balance grows and gets larger and larger just because you keep carrying that balance um, and that interest uh, keeps compounding. It's compounding in this case is not your friend. Um, so um, does anybody have any questions about this? Okay, let's go on to our next slide. 
um, one of the things we wanna know to control our personal finances is um, what's in our wallet in terms of credit cards. Um, Nick, could you put up that second poll? I'm gonna ask everybody to respond to how many credit cards do you currently have? And again, this is an anonymous um, poll. Okay. Anybody else want to uh, participate in this poll? Okay, we've got everybody answering. So here are the results. Um, so there's really quite a range of responses. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about the implications of your credit card and knowing what um, what your your credit utilization is. Um, is anyone willing to share uh, which card they use the most and what they like um, the most about it? Okay. We have a couple people who are uh, who raised their hands. Okay. Um, whoever. Um... So Nadia, if you want to start, uh, she was the first person I saw. Okay. Yeah, I can go. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the best credit card that I like using is the American Express. Um, I really find it convenient and um, uh, like most of the places that um, uh, I got things from or services or reservations, uh, even flight tickets, uh, hotel reservations, let's say for spring break, um, for other holidays, uh, even for like even five, uh, $5 and less, uh, they don't uh, charge any extras, um, uh, no uh, foreign uh, exchange fees if it happens I'm outside the States. Um, uh, I like it and it's so convenient. Um, that's great. Yeah, I mean, you're bringing up so many good points. I just want to um, stop for a second. There was a question in the uh, chat about the average debt for a millennial and that $4,900 that I was quoting, that just relates to credit card debt. That does not include um, college debt. Um, Nadia brought up a lot of great uh, features of credit cards, um, specifically, you know, some credit cards offer rewards or perks. Um, what's really important to know as you're using your credit cards is, you know, what the interest rate is. Um, because right now we're in a rising rate environment and um, most credit cards have variable rates. And what that means is that the rate can vary depending on what the underlying interest rates are. So since interest rates are going up, the credit card companies are going to be raising the interest rates on uh, unpaid balances. So who does that affect? If, if you're somebody who pays off your balance in full every month. The fact that the interest rate is going up um, on your credit card really is gonna have no impact on you. But if you are somebody who does carry a balance from month to month, it's gonna cost you more as those interest rates reset higher. Um, one thing that's Im important to understand with all consumer debt is the difference between the annual percentage rate, the APR, versus the interest rates uh, you're being charged. And this particularly comes into play with auto loans and especially um, mortgage 
uh, loans. With mortgage loans, you know, the rates may seem very close, like the difference might only be an eighth of a percentage point. And you think, oh, well, you know, my monthly payment will be lower because the interest rate on this one loan is one eighth of a percentage point lower than this other loan. But that doesn't include the total cost of the loan. The annual percentage rate is the rate that's gonna fold in all of the upfront fees on a mortgage loan that would be the points and the closing costs and any other you know, cash costs that are um, a part of getting that loan. And you really wanna know what that APR is because the APR or the uh, annual percentage rate is the total cost of the loan to you. And the one, the loan that has the lower APR is going to be the lower cost loan for you. Now, in terms of credit cards, most credit card companies uh, will show you an APR that is the same as the interest rate. And why is that? Because even though there can be other fees with a credit card, like if you uh, pay your card late and they slap a late fee on your account, um, or let's say if you use your credit card to withdraw cash at an ATM. The, the thing with the credit card companies is they can't accurately predict who those customers are gonna be that are going to incur those fees. So more times than not, the APR that you're gonna see on your credit card statement is going to be the same as the annual interest rate. Um, um, that, that you see on your statement. I think we have a couple of questions. Did we have a couple of questions? I saw a couple of raised hands go up. Oh yeah, Louis still has his hand raised. Oh, okay. Louis, did you have a question? Oh, no, no, I was just uh, going to the last question you asked, you know, what's the best uh, credit card, but I can just lower the hand. Oh, okay, okay. Um, you know, I, I'm sure all of you are inundated um, with offers, um, some charging an annual fee, some not, um, some offering zero uh, interest, and you really have to sort through these offers carefully. Um, some credit cards will charge an annual fee, and you'll get certain perks in exchange, but you really need to do the math. Um, how much is that annual fee going to be versus the value of the perks that you're going to get? If you're not gonna get a greater value um, in perks than the annual fee, it's probably not worth getting that card. Um, uh, similarly, um, you want to make sure that you're going to earn, um, if, if there's an annual fee and cash rewards, you wanna make sure that you're gonna earn more back in cash rewards than the annual fee. Now, personally, I, I want a card without any fees um, and I, I personally prefer the cash back rewards, but um, I wanna point out something else to all of you. And that is right now the market for credit cards is full of all these 0% interest um, offers. And what you need to really watch out for there are, are two things. One is if you're gonna transfer a balance um, to one of those 0% interest cards, um, first of all, you should call your credit card company up and say, can you match this? Um, and, and secondly, you need to, if you do decide to transfer your balance, know when that zero interest period ends and do the best you can to pay down as much of the balance as you can, if not paying it off completely before that interest, zero interest period ends. And the other thing that's super, super important is um, find out if when you transfer your balance, if there's a balance 
transfer fee. Because here's what uh, some of those rascal credit card companies do. They, they flash this 0% interest uh, in front of you. And it's only typically for 15 months or some period roughly around that time frame. And then what they do is they charge you a balance transfer fee. And many uh, of those fees will range between three and 5%. So let's say you transfer $5,000 and there's a 5% balance transfer fee. So what that means is that you're gonna be paying $250 just to transfer your balance to the allegedly 0% um, interest card. But what ends up happening is that $250 that they're charging you gets tacked on to the loan balance um, that you're also transferring. So now you owe $5,250 instead of $5,000. And that 0% interest isn't really 0%. On an annual basis, you're paying 5% to transfer um, those balances. So, you know, keep an eye out for those, those loan uh, balance transfer fees because it, it just may not be worth the hassle of, of making the transfer. And also the larger the loan balance that you're transferring to those 0% uh, interest cards that also slap on those balance transfer fees, the higher your um, debt is going to be to pay off. Um, does anybody have any questions on those? We did get two in the chat. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, um, will your credit score be affected if you cancel your credit card when it has a zero balance? That is a great question. Um, personally, it, it, it depends on how long your credit history has been um, with that card. Um, it, if, it's, if you have a good credit history and um, it's been over a number of years, your credit score will go down um, temporarily. So um, one thing you can do is just not close your credit card and still have um, have the credit um, line available, but just not not using it. Um, does that answer your question? Um, like partly because I do have an annual fee on the card, but I'm not using it. Um, like. Uh, some of the visas are uh, MasterCard. Uh, I didn't know about because the first year it has no annual fee. So then I discovered that it has um, a yearly annual fee, but I'm not using it and it has zero balance. So maybe it's, and I'm not using it. So they will not close it themselves, even if I'm not using it because it has annual fee. So they would mm -hmm. love just to have the annual fee. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like in, in your case, it, it might ding your credit score a little bit, but um, I wouldn't worry that much about it. And myself, like I actually recently closed, um, I had one of those Delta uh, American Express cards. Yeah, exactly. the pan pandemic, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not flying anywhere. So even though I'd had it for a very long time, I did close it. Um, and it did ding my score just a few points. It was nothing major. I mean, I, I'm not even going to tell you how long I've had that credit card. It's a very long time. Um, okay. But if you're not using it, and then you're getting charged an annual fee, I don't know, I myself, I would just close it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Um, should, should you ever choose a card with a fee? So, so that's a question that comes down to what are the perks? And what's the value of the perks um, to you? Um, and are they going to amount to, are the perks gonna have more value to you than the annual fee? So um, some people I know have, um, I forget the exact which card it is, but they pay a couple hundred dollars 
a year um, so they can get a, com a companion seat on um, a flight, let's say for their spouse or their child for free. Um, but they, they pay, I wanna say it's three or $400 a year to do that. But given the price of the ticket, the price of the ticket- How's the pound best friends? It, it, um, it greatly exceeds um, the $400 fee. So it's worth it to them. Um, does, that, does that help? It, it just really comes down to doing the math um, and if the value of the perks is worth more to, to you than what you're paying in an annual fee. Okay, we, does anybody else have any questions on that? Okay, let's go to the next one. So one thing I always like to share is that credit cards are super helpful. Um, myself, they help me manage my money really efficiently, but it's, it's only one part of somebody's total finances. And to really achieve financial stability, you need to really know uh, what you have coming in every month in terms of income and how much you're spending, because you always want to have control of your finances. And the way that you do that is that you know, you know, how much money your take home pay is and any other sources of income you have and how well you're covering all of your expenses and whether you need to make any adjustments and whether there are any upcoming uh, large expenses, like let's say car insurance, which we have to pay in Michigan twice a year now, you know, are we in a position to be able to easily make those big um, and infrequent payments that come up and just are part of our full year living expenses? We also always wanna have a rainy day savings account um, just to have that cushion in place and so that we don't completely stress out when um, one of those inevitable life curveballs, you know, comes our way. Like we had one last summer where we had to replace our entire HVAC system, um, which as many of you know, is not a small expense. And it was great that we had our uh, savings in place because we could just tap that to, to pay for, you know, that curveball. As consumer, there's nothing like being savvy on what is affecting your credit and knowing um, how your credit score comes to be. And basically, each of us has a credit history that is used to develop um, our credit scores. And then the credit score that is developed is used by lenders um, and others, and it's super important that our credit history is accurate. Um, as this guy Cornelius J, who writes a lot about credit and debt management, I love this quote of his, in times past, your social security number was the most important number, but there's a three digit credit number that's giving the social security number a run for um, its money and that is your credit score. Something in the chat. Um, why is your credit score affected by, by some companies looking at it? It, it depends on, like if, if you apply for a credit card um, and somebody goes and checks your credit score, that is going to modestly impact your credit score. Um, and it's so almost like a moment in time. If, um, if someone is, is just checking your credit score, like let's say you're going to rent an apartment, um, that should not uh, impact your credit score. Um, and we're gonna talk about that some more in a minute. So what is on a credit re report? Um, it's basically 
a seven year history or more of every loan that you've had, anytime, all, anytime you've applied for a credit card, um, it's a record of have you paid your credit, any credit that you have on time? Are you paying your rent on time? Um, have you had any missed payments? And the other thing that credit reports include are um, your employment history, your current and former uh, employers, and any so-called public information of record, like if you have declared bankruptcy, um, that's going to be on your credit record. As consumers, part of being savvy about making sure um, our credit history is right and our credit scores re accurately reflect our payment history is knowing who develops those credit scores. And there are essentially three credit bureaus in the US that do that. Equifax, TransUnion, and Experience. And what they do, each of those three credit bureaus, is they each develop a credit history on our loan history. They can go back seven years, sometimes as long as 10 years. And then the credit bureaus, that is Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, they use um, the credit um, reports that they have to generate a credit score for each of us. And FICO is the most widely used credit score that they develop, but there are some other credit scores um, that are developed. One of them is called Vantage. And the way that you can get your most accurate credit score is to get the credit score directly from the credit bureau. So what determines your credit score? Your FICO score can range anywhere from 300 to 800. And the, by far the two most important factors that affect your credit score are your payment history. You know, have you made all your payments on time and in full? And how much do you owe? So they look at how much you owe in terms of like all of the credit that's been approved for you. And in terms of your credit cards, how much of the line that's been approved for you are you using? They look at each credit card individually and then in total. And the best position you can be in is when your credit utilization is less than 30% of your approved line. So that means like, let's say you have um, a credit line of $1,000 and you're using $500 of that credit line every month. Your credit utilization um, is, is 50%, 50 percent, five zero percent. And ideally what you'd like to do is get that to 30 percent or lower because when your credit utilization is um, less than 30 percent, that signals to the credit bureaus that you're a good credit risk that um, you're far more likely to pay your bills on time and in full and that your current income very adequately um, covers your expenses and that like you're not having to stretch to, to make your uh, payment obligations. So an excellent credit score would be 720 um, or above. And somebody with that kind of credit score is not only going to get a lower interest rate, but they're going to have um, a bigger credit line extended to them. Um, somebody with a lower credit score, let's say below 630, um, they're going to have a higher interest rate charged to them because um, their credit history of paying on time and on full isn't as strong as somebody in the 720 credit. Um, range. Does anybody have any questions um, on that? Because this is really sort of the heart of the issue here. 
um, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a question, but not on the uh, credit score itself, but on the um, APR, since you mentioned the APR. Mm -hmm. Is there any difference between the APR and the other type of APR? You mean the straight interest rate? Uh, I don't know, but usually on the statement, um, they uh, usually mention the purchase APR and the cash APR. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what they're referring to is if you if you go to an ATM, or let's say you're you're charging your gross groceries at the grocery store, and and you say you know I'd like to get some additional cash with that, the interest rate charged on that cash advance is is going to be pretty high, um, and oh. so there's like the cash advance APR, and then there's the interest rate that is charged on the loan balances. Okay. Um, so, and, and actually, if you, if you can, if you're close to an ATM and you need cash, um, it's way better to just withdraw the money using your ATM than using a cash advance um, with your credit card because the credit cards, they can't wait to charge you interest. Um, and they are going to charge you a much higher interest rate on that cash advance than compared to getting it just dollar for dollar at the ATM. Okay, I got that. I, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. That was fun. Okay, good. Um, any other questions? There, there's another hand raised. Okay. Um, how do you get a score over 800? Um, that's, that's such a great question. Um, it's many years of paying all of your balances on time, like your car loan payments or your lease payments. Um, if you're renting an apartment or if you are if you own your home and you've got many years of um, paying your mortgage off every month, it's many years of paying your, your credit cards off in full. It's really, length of credit history. Um, and that the, the, that length of credit history is really important. And then having low credit utilization is the other factor. So, any other questions? That's a great question. I have a, I have a quick question. Um, I see that there's a 10% for type of credit use. What would what type would you be penalized for um, in that type of credit use? I'm sorry. Um, can you say that question again? I see that there is a type of credit use, and you know, in factoring a credit score, and it says ten percent. And I'm just curious to what type of credit would you be penalized for using in that ten percent? Um. That would be probably like very high interest rate loans. Um, okay. Yeah, you always like, we're the consumers. We should be shopping for the best rates we can get. Um, and um, Nerd Wallet, um, you, you can look on their site because they, screen all the credit card offers. Um, that, that's a good place to start. Your financial institution, whoever you're using, um, is another place to start. And if you have your checking account there, you should really leverage the strength of your current relationships to try to get them to um, give you the best interest rate possible. And I personally wouldn't be shy. I've done this myself in the past where if um, this was you know, before there was so much competition, um, you know, in, in terms of um, fees and, you know, annual fees and stuff, but I wouldn't be shy at all about calling up your bank um, or whoever is giving you the credit card and saying, I've got this other offer and it's a lot more attractive to me. Um, if you're not going to match it, um, I, I may close out my credit um, card account with you and get that other credit card accounts 
set up and then you can close out the less favorable one for you. But you should always have the most favorable terms for yourself and, and act like a consumer. Let's see, I think we have one more question. How does it affect your credit score if you co-sign a mortgage loan for a friend? Okay, so anytime your name is on a loan, that's, that's a wonderful question too. Um, so all of the payments that are made um, are going to be impacting your credit score, all of the payments on that mortgage loan. Anytime um, you are um, a co-owner of a loan account, everything that happens on that is going to affect you and the other person. Uh, Nwandi, does that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay, good. Good. Does anybody um, have any other questions on this? Okay, let's go to the next question. Next slide. So um, there are a couple ways that you can get a copy of your credit report. And it is super important to review this annually. One is to go to this website, annualcreditreport.com. You can get a free copy every year from this website and it will not ding um, your credit score at all. And I strongly advise doing this because having done this, even um, I haven't done it yet this year, but I did it last year. And what I found is that um, my employment history was not properly recorded on the credit report. It had, um, it, it showed that I worked at Mongolian Beef in Royal Oak. Well, I, I, first of all, I've never been to that restaurant. Second of all, I think it's out of business now. So I called the credit report, uh, called the credit bureaus and um, asked them to correct that error, which they did. Um, but it's super important to stay on top of this. The other site that you can go to uh, to get a free credit report without dinging uh, your credit score is to go to the Experian website and um, type in that you want to go to Experian Boost and you can get a free copy of your credit report. Um, but you want to make sure that it's accurate because it just impacts so many things. And it per, I, it's sort of like getting my annual checkup at the doctor. It's like I do this for myself every year because I want um, my financial health to be as strong as possible. And I want all of the information to be as accurate as possible. So I thought I would include this slide about things that you can do to build and maintain a strong credit history. The first thing is um, you want to try to borrow only what you can pay off in full each month and um, pay all your bills on time. All of you um, should be checking your statements and you can use the apps on your phone to automate your payments so you don't miss any uh, payment dates. But always, always, always check your statements to make sure that they're accurate. Uh, one of the ways that credit card fraud happens is that the fraudsters start charging very small amounts like a dollar or it could be less than a dollar because they're assuming that you're not going to catch that amount that you're not checking your statements. And the minute you see something that's not accurate, um, contact your credit card provider. Another thing you can do to build a good credit history is to keep um, your credit line utilization less than 30%. So if your credit line's $3,000, um, try to use less than $1,000 every month. And if you run into an emergency, um, try to tap your rainy day fund before you um, put that big charge on your, your credit card. And if you do carry balances, try to pay more than the minimum amount so that you can completely pay down that debt. And that if you have more than one credit card, 
where you're um, carrying balances month to month, start with the credit card that you have the lowest amount of balances on and pay that down first because you'll find that it will make you feel so much more confident and will give you momentum to go on to the other credit card and work on paying that credit card down. I'm gonna pause a minute because it looks like we have a question um, in the chat. Um, we also have a hand raised from okay. Arthur. Okay, um, reading Kevin's question. I've heard what's in your credit card file is really more important than the score, meaning accurate information in the credit uh, report uh, determines approval with credit cards. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Um, Kevin, thank you for bringing that point up. Um, your, your credit report is going to drive your credit score. So that's why it is super important that what's on that credit report is accurate. And um, basically, like whoever your lease payment is with, whoever your credit cards are with, they're reporting your payment activity for free to these credit bureaus. And so it really behooves all of us to be very vigilant as to what's on that credit report because um, Kevin's uh, point is, is, is right on the mark that the credit report is really um, the key for what is going to drive your credit score. So the, the more accurate that credit report is, the better the score is going to reflect your payment habits. Um, let's see, how do the credit? Um, so the, again, the credit uh, bureaus get this all this information on all of us um, through the financial institutions. Like if you rent a, an apartment, um, the, the rental office is going to typically be reporting this information to the credit bureaus. Uh, the mortgage companies report this information to the credit bureaus. If you um, have a car loan um, or a car lease, whoever you're making your payments to, they're going to be reporting this information to the credit bureaus. Um, a fabulous question here. Is it better to just not use credit cards at all to avoid getting into debt? Um, so the thing is, you, you do need a credit score um, because as I'm going to talk about in a second, the credit score is used not just by financial institutions who um, grant us credit. The key um, with the credit cards though, is that you want to be able to pay them off in full. So um, one thing that I know a lot of um, people do is they put their subscriptions uh, on their credit cards, because those are small amounts and those can be paid off in full um, pretty easily and help you build a consistent and good credit record. Does that answer your questions um, or is, should I continue to elaborate on that? We good on that point? Okay. Um, the other point I wanna make about building your uh, credit history is that if, you know, life happens and if something comes up and you're unable to, um, to pay off the debt or, or make the payment on time, notify the creditor as soon as possible so that they can work with you and um, help you put together a plan to, to meet your debt obligations. It's super important for all of us that we protect our credit and our credit score like we protect our and guard our mobile phones. Um, you know, we were just talking about how important it is to monitor your credit score and what's on your credit report annually. Um, you can, as we were just talking about, go to annualcreditreport.com or Experian Boost to get a free copy of your credit, um, credit report. You can monitor your credit score 
through apps like Mint and Credit Karma. And I know my bank um, also allows me to monitor my uh, credit score. Sometimes the credit scores they report um, through these apps, just be aware of this, are, it's not the FICO score, it's the Vantage score, which is a little bit different and not used as widely. But it's, it's still um, a decent way to keep, keep uh, on top of directionally, you know, what's happening with your credit score. I'm gonna stop a second, we've got a question. Um, will becoming a graduate assistant help increase your credit score? What helps your credit score is um, paying your bills on time um, and in full. Um, and, and building that history for a long time, that's what's gonna help your credit history, your credit report, which uses your credit history, and then ultimately your credit score. I hope that answers your question. If not, um, uh, let me know. An another thing that you can do to protect your credit is you know, set up alerts using the apps um, on what charges are hitting your credit card and um, when the payments are due. You always wanna make your payments after the statement cutoff date and before the final uh, statement due date so that your payment can, your on-time payment can reflect, be reflected on your credit report. If you pay your credit card before, um, um, before the statement cutoff date. Um, so in other words, if your statement uh, cycle is from the first of the month to the 30th of the month, and let's say you're looking at your balance on the 15th and you're like, I'm just gonna pay that off. I'm just gonna set it up and pay it off. It's a good thing to pay off your balance. Um, the thing with paying off your balance at that point is that the, because you're paying before the statement due date, you won't get payment you won't get credit for making the payment on time um, on your credit report. It won't show up as anything. I don't know why they do it that way. It's just the way they do it. Um, hey, Julie, you have a, you, we have a hand oh, raised. Arthur okay. had raised his hand uh, okay. a little bit ago. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. I want to make sure I answer your question. <laughs> Thank you. How are you doing? Um, I had, my question was about the, Oops, sorry, getting the uh, credit report from the annualcreditreport.com. Uh, once you, and you say you can do that annually, does that give you the, uh, the credit report from all three um, creditors, from all three of the, um, you know, from Experian, yeah. Equifax, and TransUnion? You should be able to see all three. Um, if for some reason you can't, um, I would call um, the credit agency, um, the credit bureau that you cannot see and say, hey, I'm supposed to be able to get a free you know, credit report. I don't see your bureau's information on this. You should be able to see it. Um, yeah, I, I did it once, but it was a couple of years ago and I hadn't, I hadn't done it again. I was talking to a coworker of mine, and he was uh, recommending to, uh, you know, get one of the three, like every three months, you know, instead of getting all three, and then you know, just say hey, take oh, your time, go, mm -hmm. go through that one. If you got any issues, you know, you know, you get with experience, you know, for example, you know, you update that, and you know, the next three months you pull TransUnion, go through that one. If you got any updates, you know, uh, you know, you get that fixed, and then you know, the next 90 days, you pull the third one. And then by the time you complete that cycle, then it's time to start it over again. That way you are continually running through your credit reports, uh, your credit reports, you know, throughout the year to ensure that you're keeping them accurate and staying yeah. on top of what, what are your suggestions against that? You know, um, I, I just check mine once a year and um, I would say, let me get back to you on that. Um, that's a really interesting way to look at it. I honestly, I, I wanna get you a good answer and not just shoot from the hip on that. Um, but okay. for sure you could, 
get a free credit report from Experian Boost and also one from annualcreditreport.com in the same year. And it's not gonna ding your credit score. Okay. And my, my last question was about the, the FICO score. And uh, much like you, I can also monitor my credit score from uh, through my bank account, through my bank. Um, and I'm, I'm a member of a credit union. Um, and the there's a significant difference, but now I know you said those are usually the Vantage score that they give you if, it, if I'm monitoring it through my bank. And um, I had pulled, well, actually I didn't pull it. Um, Wells Fargo sent me, uh, also sends me my, uh, a monthly updated FICO score. And oh, you're my, okay. You're 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 in good shape. And my my FICO score is like eight eleven, and my credit score through my bank um, is like seven forty seven. So there's a distinct, you know, kind of a significant difference there. I think between the two is that normal or. See that that um, you might be getting a Vantage score um, from your bank. I, I would call your bank and ask them what that score is. Is it a Vantage score? There are different types of FICO scores too mm -hmm. um, without getting down into the weeds too much. I would ask them, uh, I'd call your bank and ask them why there's a difference and what is the score that they're providing you. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep, sure. and I'll get back to you on that other question. Okay. Um, I think we had one other question. Um, um, good question, Louis. Um, so, um, if Discover is giving that to you directly, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be hurting your credit score at all. Um, if you're saying that Discover gives you that credit score um, monthly um, and you're not having to do anything, it shouldn't be having any impact whatsoever. Um, but, um, if, if you want to email me offline, you know, we can look into that together. If you'd like my help on that, you could also just call discover directly, um, and ask them, but if they're giving it to you, it shouldn't be impacting you at all. And you shouldn't have to be, they shouldn't be charging you for that either. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to mention is that if um, by chance you lose your credit card, you um, misplace it, one thing you can always do is use the app on your phone to turn it off, turn off your credit card so nobody can charge anything. Um, and you should totally call the credit card company and let them know. And then, you know, I don't know, sometimes if, if you misplace it and then you, you find your credit card again, you can just reactivate it by um, contacting the credit card company and uh, turning it on via your app again, um, but um, double check all of that with your bank. That's, that's how it works for my bank. I don't know if all banks are the same. So why is this so important, your credit score and, and making sure your credit history and report is accurate? The thing with credit scores is that they're so widely used now. It's, they don't just impact the interest rate on your credit cards and let's say on your mortgage loans, but many potential employers check your credit score. Um, credit scores are the single most important factor determining um, the premium you're going to pay for like car insurance and life insurance. And you know many places um, that you might want to rent um, from like your apartment or whatever, they're also going to be checking your credit score. So credit scores just impact so many impact aspects of our lives. And that's why um, we always want to be on top of, you know, what's going on with our credit 
scores. Um, there's a, a credit union right near the Wayne uh, State Campus, Lake Trust Credit Union. And one of the people there uh, said this to me and it just really stuck in my mind, like strive to be the credit card company's worst customer. I just, I, I just thought that was so phenomenal that a financial institution would say that. And um, what they meant by that was that if you carry a balance on your credit card every month from month to month, you are like a credit card company's dream come true. Because if, if you just carry, let's say $2,000 in credit card debt and carry that balance month to month, and all you're doing is making the $50 minimum payment every month. And if there's an 18% interest rate charged on that debt, it's going to take you more than five years to pay off that credit card debt and interest. And over that five-year period, you will have um, paid more than $1,000 in interest in addition to the $2,000 loan balance. So the, the big points are that one, uh, carrying unpaid balances with high interest rates really erodes your financial well being, and it certainly erodes your wealth. And the second point is that if you pay off your balances in full each month, you're building a good credit history, but you're also still going to be getting the rewards offered you know, by your credit card. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you have. You've asked so many great and all of the important questions about credit and, and debt. And if you have any questions beyond today's session, please feel free to email me. I put my email on the slide. So feel free to contact me anytime. But if anybody has any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions? I, th I think that wraps it up, Nick. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining the session. And I hope you'll join us next week uh, where we delve deeper into uh, how you can build your assets and have a lifetime of financial security. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, Julie. That was a uh, one of the more interactive sessions where you, you got all of your questions uh, asked during the presentation. So uh, really well done overall. And, and uh, thank you, everybody, for, for coming in and being such an engaging audience. Um, if you have not registered for next week, please be sure to do so at, at uh, gradschool.wayne.edu. I'll also put a link to next week's event in our thank you email, which will also have the video uh, that we'll send out uh, tomorrow or Thursday, whenever the video gets uploaded to YouTube. So thank you once again, Julie. Um, and thank you, everybody else uh, for attending. And we will see you next week. Thank you so much, Nick. See you next.